Well, hello there, and welcome to Tasty Tuesday with V's Holistic Health. I am V, Vanessa Kudo. Today, I will be sharing what I am preparing for dinner, the qualities and properties of each specific spice or food. So today will be lots of green because I'm feeling lots of heart chakra, but also because this is just what I have for today. So we're going to start with mung beans. Mung beans should be soaked from anywhere from four hours to overnight. Overnight is best, but I forgot to do that. So they've just been soaking for about six hours now. Um, always wash your hands, make sure your hands are clean before you start cooking. Normally they will start to get white, like this. Let's see if you can see that. So they kind of sprouted, starts to get a little bit white, and then if you've had sprouted mung beans before, you know they get a little bit of a tail. So that will happen if you soak them overnight, which I highly recommend. But today we're gonna do mung beans, and let's talk about the benefits of mung beans. Mung beans have a raza taste of sweet and astringent. So they also have an action, which is the area um, on the digestion and our elements in our body of a cooling sensation. So they also have a vipaka, which is after it's been digested. Um, they have a quality of sweet. This is great for all doshas. What is a dosha? A dosha is basically, so there's three doshas, vata, pitta, and kapha, and each dosha has two main elements that make up that dosha. Substance, quality, um, that makes us. Um, mung beans are great for all dosha, Tridosha, Tridoshic. Um, so you can't go too wrong with having mung beans. I'll be cooking this in vegetable broth. This is one cup soaked. So first it was dried um, and now they're soaked. So I am preparing this for a couple of days and as well as my mom. So we're gonna go through this very fast. Um, so I'll just be cooking this whole thing of mung beans and vegetable broth and we'll go from there. I have now rinsed off the mung beans after being soaked and then we'll get this in the pot. I'm also currently hungry and I totally forgot I haven't had my power shake yet so as I prepare dinner I'm having my power shake and I recommend you try it out. Daily Core 4 best option that there is. You're going to get everything that you need, protein, probiotic, and greens. So definitely recommend that. I'll make sure to have that in the comments, the description. My pot is warmed up. It's ready to go. I personally use ghee. You can use any other oil, whatever you have or resonate with, but I will be using ghee. Personally, do not measure. So this is just a small spoon. That's how much ghee I use. Let that warm up. It's starting to liquidify. Get it off the spoon. Let the ghee melt. And then I'll add the mung beans. vegetable broth that I'm using. Always make sure to filter the purified water. Got this at Mother's Market. Now I have two and a half cups of vegetable broth. With the mung beans, I'm going to put a lid on it. It's at about a medium heat. And we'll let this start to simmer and boil for 15 minutes and then we'll come back and check it. At did you know that while you're cooking, using a lid actually keeps the nutrients inside? 
So there's about four minutes left on the timer. It's already bubbling, boiling. So I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. So now it's at like a low medium flame and we will be cooking it until it is ready. So about probably another 15 minutes. There are many different types and varieties of basil, but in Ayurveda, it depends on which basil that you have. And unfortunately, I do not know which basil I have. So a great way to test your herbs or food is to be fasting and to taste the spice or food that you're trying to figure out what quality it has. Um, it's great to do that while fasting. That way your digestion is completely cleared. Your taste buds are on point and you can actually feel it the sensation of what the herb food is doing. So now, normally basil is a very warming herb. Uh, it's great at balancing pitta and kapha doshas. Um, and with pittas, be careful because it can't aggravate it in excess. So um, I am a pitta. I will be using it with caution. That way I don't aggravate my fire element because I already am fiery. As I'm looking at what I'm going to be putting in this spice wise, I'm like, oh my goodness, this is so heating. Um, so I'm also going to be using sage, uh, which is great for kapha, but it aggravates vata and pitta. So to kind of counterbalance all of these heating and warming herbs, I'm going to be using coriander, which is great because it has a cooling effect. Five minutes left on the timer. This is what it's looking like. I already gave it a stir. And now I'm going to be adding the fresh basil and sage. I put them in there. You can kind of see I buried them in there. But what you're looking for in the mung beans is see how they started to get a little bit white and they're cracking open. That's how you you know that they're being cooked so you want them soft so if you're not looking for soup like then I would have just added two cups because this is kind of soupy but that's what I was looking for like I said at the beginning of the video if you have seeds you want to toss them in with the ghee let them toast for a little bit and then add the mung beans and vegetable broth when you're using powder or fresh herbs, you want to add that in towards the end because the properties are a little bit different when they're not whole. So I will be adding about a teaspoon of coriander and a teaspoon of turmeric. So I actually only added half a teaspoon of turmeric. I also said the fresh herbs are towards the end, but I meant to say towards the middle. So you're cooking it, let's say something is cooking for 30 minutes, you put it in about 15. And then towards the end, the powders, I would say about three minutes. I just tasted it, it turned out amazing. So what I like to do is, especially if they're leafy greens, which I do have, I have spinach and arugula. Um, arugula is very warming. Again, so I'm glad I used coriander um, and then spinach. So anyway, I'll get into that later. But what I like to do is I like to add things that cook pretty fast um, and I like to make a bowl. So I'm going to add the spinach and the arugula at the bottom of my bowl. And then I'm going to put the mung beans on top and it should just cook it. There's an arugula, it looks like a lot, kind of is, but that's fine. And now I'm just going to add my mung beans on top of the bowl. Boom, just like that. And then the heat from the mung beans should slightly cook the arugula and spinach. 